Saeed Akbaruddin was India's ambassador to the United Nations. He's now the dean of the Kautilya School of Public Policy in Hyderabad. Uh, Mr. Akbaruddin, great to have you on the program. Uh, let me begin by asking you, I mean, you've been part of the Ministry of External Affairs for so many decades. The MEA has successfully conducted evacuations of Indian citizens before. Uh, do you really believe we needed to send ministers to now kind of oversee what's going on? Will it help? So, Nidhi, before I start, I'd like to welcome you back on your perch, and I wish you all the best uh, in NDTV Thank again. Uh, that said, um, you're right uh, that India has a long tradition of helping its uh, nationals uh, uh, in zones of conflict. I remember as a young diplomat, I was on the border between uh, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia when the invasion of uh, Kuwait took place in um, uh, 1990. Um, so we have a long tradition. Uh, we have a understanding of how to handle these things. Uh, that said, um, it's, um, uh, it's not new that uh, we have senior level supervision. Uh, let's look at the most recent big crisis we uh, handled in uh, Yemen. Uh, uh, General V.K. Singh was at that time deployed in uh, Djibouti, uh, from where he was overseeing uh, Air India flights into Yemen and back to Djibouti from where uh, they were, Indians were coming back. So it's a call that uh, the government of the day can decide uh, to have senior level supervision. Um, uh, so I don't think uh, there needs to be um, uh, too much concern expressed on senior level supervision. If that is what the government of the day wants, I think we need to give them that space to make that. However, um, we certainly need more people there to help because uh, zones of conflict are staggering in their uh, vastness. Uh, and especially, their chaos. Uh, and their chaos, absolutely. And therefore... The more people we have on the ground, the better it is. A senior level, uh, level supervision helps, also signals, and diplomacy is also about signaling. So I think right. we should leave that aside about uh, whether uh, there needs to be senior level supervision. If the government of the day decides, so be it. Uh, it will not impede uh, or uh, infringe on uh, okay. the work. So so which is me, required at the ground level. Right. So let me ask you then about India's position and, and, and the sort of tightrope that it's walking diplomatically on Russia uh, at the moment. Uh, you heard what Shashi Tharoor said just before you came on. He, he believes that India needs to take a stand based on principles and that we shouldn't be seen to be on the wrong side of history. Uh, do you think we can afford to do that? So, uh, Nidhi, again, it's useful to go back in history uh, and see... Uh, what has been India's position? Um, let's go back uh, um, uh, in my recollection. Uh, if you go back across many prime ministers, many governments, you'll find that the end result is what we've always taken. Let's go back to 1956, the invasion in Hungary uh, under Prime Minister Nehru. We did not adopt a condemnatory approach. So that set the bar for us that while we may have a view, we do express support for principles, we do not follow a trajectory of a condemnatory approach. Uh, that's not the only instance. I told you in 1956 in Hungary, when the Soviet Union uh, sent troops uh, uh, there. In 1968, in Czechoslovakia, uh, when Mrs. Gandhi was the prime minister, again, we did not uh, uh, follow a condemnatory approach. In 1979, in Afghanistan. And I heard Mr. Shashi Tharoor, but he, I think, may have forgotten that in 2008, when there was this dispute between Russia and Georgia about Abkhazia and South Ossetia, again, India did not follow a non, uh, India did follow a non-condemnatory approach and uh, uh, abstained on the world. But Ambassador, Ambassador, sorry to interrupt, but you know, foreign policy does evolve as well. And I would assume that India has evolved, certainly in all these decades. We now see ourselves as a rising superpower. We are part, uh, you know, of, of, uh, of a tie-up known as the Quad with supposedly like-minded democracies, including the United States. So when we set uh, to, you know, tell the world that we are the world's largest democracy, 
uh, and, and, and we want to set an example by, by, by saying that, uh, then isn't it awkward for India when you see such a naked aggression as you do by, by President Putin to sit on the fence? I, I know that India's position has been a bit more nuanced. In fact, we've offered humanitarian aid to the Ukraine as well today. Uh, but, you know, given our, our, what we are propagating to the world as a democracy, how long can we sit on the fence? So, uh, Nidhi, um, I take your point. But let's look at the other side uh, of this. Um, I think uh, we made six statements in the Security Council itself over the last month, or a little less than, yes, a month. 31st of January it started, and, to, uh, and till today we made six statements. Look at how we've evolved. Uh, you're looking at the big issue of whether we've abstained or not. Um, first of all, let's start with the big picture. Uh, abstention is not support for uh, Russia. Uh, if that was so, then Russia, um, uh, it would be counted as a negative vote. Let's be clear. Uh, abstention differs from voting no. And you can see the difference in what Russia was doing and what we were doing. But that's the big picture. Leave that out. Right? Look at the granular detail. In the first three statements that we made, we did not refer to any principles except expressing our hope for a diplomatic I have 30 uh, seconds. solution. Right. Uh, but in the last two, we made five different uh, as, uh, changes, and that's clearly an evolution. We are now repeatedly saying that territorial integrity and sovereignty is a principle that is uh, uh, of abiding interest and faith to right. all of us. Well, I, we are I, also saying. No, sorry, I, I'm, so, I'm so, so sorry to interrupt you because I'm out of time. I see what you're saying. It is a dilemma. Clearly, India does have to look out for its own interests. But at the same time, when we abstained, we were in the company of China, ironically, uh, and the UAE. Uh, is that the company we want to be in uh, on, on such important moral issues as well? So that's just something to think about. At the end of the day, diplomats uh, know best uh, about what position India should take. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Afgaruddin. Thank you. Thank you, Nidhi.